<clears throat> Good morning, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. We just turned uh, 300 and some, 370 head in here. And uh, my f first video, I don't know what happened, but it stopped. <laughs> you don't get to see him actually coming in. It stopped before we had it complete. But you can hear him in there. They're balling. Uh, this strip of cockleburrs uh, is uh, 60 about 60 feet wide and about uh, 300 feet long and uh, they're actually stocked in here we did the calculations yesterday uh, it's right at a million pounds <laughs> they come back at us so they went to the end of the paddock and now they're coming back and you can't see that spider web that's awesome big old spider web These are, you know, these are full-grown cows, and all you can see is the top of their backs, kind of. You got to get close, but we got a mob coming back at us. Look at this. So they just—they've only been in here about two minutes. They went to the end of the paddock, and now here they all—they're all coming back. So Isaac just put the gate up, locked everything in here. And you know, the thing about cockleburs, when you walk through them and, and you and you bust them up. Uh, they do, it, uh, you can smell them. They have a unique smell. Uh, <laughs> we knew we were going to get a lot of balling, and that's because the, the cows can't see their, their uh, calves. Hey, Isaac. Hey, Ben, run, run the cows out and close that gate. The cows have done, they went back up to that water point, which is the only bare spot in here. And they've accumulated up there. It's a big area. They don't, they need to be out here. So the boys are going to push them out and close that gate. So they've got to, they got to go to work. <laughs> you can definitely tell there's things happening in here already. There, there's some uh, pretty good grass in here. There's some barnyard grass. Uh, they're just confused. Look at the swallows. The swallows are the top of the cow's back. Look at them. Oh man, look out. Here they come. Whoa. <laughs> man, look at that. I'll tell you what, there's some birds getting planted on the ground now. I mean, some serious birds. The swallows are all over the top of it. Need about 10,000 more swallows. interested in eating these birds and that's because they're too mature the ones that were up in the previous paddock and the birds were about two foot tall and of course they were mixed in with other grasses they they ate every single bird in that paddock these are big birds they're five six you know six feet tall <laughs> So Ben, Ben started the stopwatch and we put him in here. We're only going to leave him in here about 15 minutes and uh, see what they do to this strip. Again, it's about 300 feet long, 60 feet wide. And we've got uh, two more of these set up like this. And then we'll give them their strip of normal grass for the day. As you can see, uh, they haven't been in here very long and they're doing doing a lot of this. They're all 
also kind of standing around looking at us. Like, what are you doing to us? <laughs> Man, look at this. This was done in about five minutes. So another ten, we got about another ten minutes here. And it's going to look a little bit different. We did notice. We did notice in the previous paddock that the cattle are eating the very tops of the uh, common ragweed, which is this one right here. Normally, we don't get very good consumption on common ragweed. Um, but something found that giant foxtail there and took a bite of it. Yeah, these cows are like, you gotta give us something better than this. I'm sure there's some cows somewhere who would think they are in the Garden of Eden. But these cows are used to uh, something a little different than what we gave them. I think part of it is they can't see each other very well. <laughs> they sure can't see their calves. They're, that's what they're doing. They're bawling for their calves. And uh, calves are scattered all through here. But, you know, I haven't seen this fence jump once, which means nothing has run through it. You would want to try this with uh, cattle that aren't trained to hot wire. Because they just, they would run right through that fence in a heartbeat. Now there's a cow that's eating a little bit of burrs, just the very tops. We've also noticed that when you leave cows alone, get out of the herd, uh, they, they, they go to grazing. That's what they do. And, uh, so we're going to do a follow-up on this. Uh, we'll, uh, we're going to move them here again. And I just want to see what they do to the next piece. It'd be nice to be able to. Uh, we may we may be able to do that. It'd be a little tricky, um, and that is the reel is down at the far end of the paddock here, where the boys are standing over there. We could reel that reel back, you know, 100 feet, let all the cows go into that next strip right there, and then just put the reel right back up onto the fence. It's cool out here. It's like, I think it's 59 degrees this morning. So it's not like they need water right away. We could lock them in this next piece for another 15 minutes. Uh, the more you can increase your stock in density, the more trampling you get. So we move this wire here in another 10 minutes or so. I, I think that's what we may do. Leave the post in. So we'll just take the wire, the reel at that far end. We'll leave the post in. We'll reel it up to here. <clears throat> and then uh, let all the cows go in. Then we'll just put the wire right back up. And so they'll be locked out of this piece. This, this will be part of their paddock today. And once we leave, there's going to be cows coming back through here foraging. You know, and part of it, I didn't cover that. These cows aren't hungry. They, they don't... I mean, there's some cows just standing around. They're not even grazing because they're just not, they're full. Which is not a bad thing. <laughs> See, those cows, they're just soaking up sun. Here's a little cat, a little cat. It's not a little cat, it's a pretty good sized cat. <laughs> oh, 11. He's found him some uh, giant foxtail down in there. He's like, you cows can complain all you want. I'm going to eat. He looks like he's in a forest. He's in a forest down there. That's a pretty good sized cat. <laughs> Starting to see the burrs go down. Um, a while ago, you couldn't see cows in here. And as they keep moving back and forth through here, there's uh, more and more birds 
biting the dust. Yeah, it's uh, just a beautiful morning to be outside with the cow herd and seeing what they're doing to these birds and all the other stuff that's in here. And they're kind of doing what I thought they would. They're, they're going after the stuff that's very succulent. There's a cow has got a big old mouthful of giant ragweed. Nice. I mean, she pulled the whole plant up. The young cat. You see, they're starting to quiet down a little bit. And because the birds are hitting the ground, the cows can see a little better. And they're like, I guess you aren't going to move us. We just go start and graze. There's some candy in here. I mean, there's lots of good candy. This cow's found it. So does that one. She's got her mouth full of grass. This little calf is going after a common ragweed. He's actually eating the lower leaves off that common ragweed. The cow's got a big old mouthful of grass. I see something moving over here. I just see the weeds moving. <laughs> Can't see an animal. There's one down in there. What is that? Ooh, that's a pretty heifer. That's what that is. It's like they're grazing in a forest. Look at that. 9103, you're pretty happy in there, aren't you? Yeah, you're pretty happy. Man, there is a ton of stuff. And you can see where the fence was at. They, when they turned around and went back, they just beat, this looks like a highway in here. But you know, you take a couple hundred animals traveling around in here, they can do this pretty darn quick. So they laid a ton of carbon on the ground right here. Some of the cows are just going back to grazing. Uh, they haven't tackled that big pile there yet. But if you look, you look down in there, there, there's grasses down in there, okay? I just haven't seen anything really go after the birds. And, you know, I had some people comment uh, the other day when I posted what we were going to do about bringing sheep into here. Uh, we had sheep on cockle birds before, and they will eat some of them. But the problem with uh, these taller birds is the sheep can't reach them. And we got birds in here seven feet tall. And uh, the sheep will eat some of the lower leaves. Uh, I'm sure goats would eat a lot of this. Uh, we don't have goats, and I don't have anything against goats. We used to. We used to have about 50 of them, and we just couldn't keep them home. Um, that's why we don't have goats today, because I've got neighbors that spend a lot of money on deer food plots. And uh, my goats would get out in the fall every year, and they would wipe out those food plots. And I had some pretty mad hot hunters, and I don't blame them. They'd put in, you know, a lot of labor and time and money, and then our rogue goats would go there and eat all the eat all the food plot up before deer season ever started. So I built fence, a new fence between us, and it didn't slow them down. Once they learned they, those food plots are over there, you just couldn't keep them home, and so I had to sell them. And I, I didn't like it. I, I kind of, I like the goats. They're they're a different kind of critter. They're, they just got a, their own unique way of doing things. <laughs> but they're a, they're a joy to watch. I, I love watching goats graze because they are very very meticulous and they go after a lot of woody stuff, and uh, they make a living at it. Oh, we have got cowbirds out here. I've never seen cowbirds like this. Uh, last night we saw two different groups in here. And one group, I think there was close to 500 birds in. And the other group, probably 200. And I mean, just it's a huge, huge swarm. It looked like mosquitoes. 
or you know, big group of flies or something. They're just all over the cattle, landing in amongst them. And they'd, and they'd all raised up at the same time. They'd all land at another spot. And they just continued to do that all night. And uh, they're eating a lot of flies and different things. So, you know, a lot of people don't like cowbirds, but we do. Look at them. They're all over. All over. And you can hear the cows rustling through the burrs. You just hear them. There's a lot of walking going on out here. Well, here comes a pretty bull. He is a dude. That's a two. Uh, he'll, he's just uh, turned... Let's see, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, he turned two this spring. It's a beautiful bull. So that's a two-year-old. This is what a, a one-year-old looks like right here. He just turned one. You can't see him. Other than he's sleek hiding and he's a chunk of meat. The birds cover up your animals. <laughs> But you're, you're not here near the bawling that you heard a, a minute ago. That's because the cows are starting to graze. So just in, the, just in their uh, everyday function of doing what they do, grazing, which is what they're doing right now. They're walking through here, they're going after the, the candy, and they're tramping a lot of the stuff on the ground. And uh, we may shoot another video tonight after they've been on this for 12 hours. Well, it won't be 12, it's moved them at 6.30, we'll move them at 5, yeah, 10, 11 hours, whatever. We'll see what this looks like. It's going to probably look a little bit different than this. But we don't want to push them too hard. If you put them in here and that's all they got to eat is birds, people are worried about poisoning. Uh, you know, cockleburrs being poisonous. Well, the uh, actual hardened seed, when they get mature, if they eat a lot of those seeds, I guess they can be poisonous. But none of these birds have seeds on them. There's little baby tiny seeds just starting to... You can see them right there. But they're, they're not even close to being a mature seed. Uh, they still need another, I'm going to guess, two to three weeks. So we're not going to let them get that stage. Uh, we will get them before they get there. The cows don't get them planted on the ground. We're going to chew it up. And uh, we will use a, a bush hog and just chew these plants and, and put all that carbon on the top of the ground. And uh, we're going to grow some more grass with all these birds. And what caused all these birds, uh, for those of you all new to the video, we had a wet spell here this spring where it just rained and rained and rained for like two weeks. And we had them in this particular paddock and it rained four inches that day. And uh, they just mudded it. This whole thing right here just was turned to mud. And they didn't pug it deep, they only went about maybe an inch deep, but it was just mud. And when they went in that morning, the grass was up to our knees, almost to our waist. And that night when we came back, the grass was flattened. You couldn't find any grass. It was all down in the mud. And the whole place stunk. It was all that grass that was trampled into the mud. It just had a sour smell to it. And this is what came up. So nature's like, okay. Uh, you know, if you're going to do that, look at that. That cow's eating cocklebirds. Plucking them things off there like lollipops. <laughs> Look at that. That tongue come out. Isn't that beautiful? I love how a cow's tongue wraps around its food. That's the first one that I've actually seen just going after the cocklebird. Like, if y'all aren't going to eat them, I will. Look at that. It is all new growth. It's a little bit more mature than what we would think. 
that they would go after it, but that cow's going going pretty good on it. This cow 232, look at her bull calf. That is a chunk of meat. Get over here in the sun where you can see. Yeah, look at that. I think he's getting everything he needs. Milk is just rolling out of his mouth. <laughs> Looks like he's got a milkshake on his mouth. I'll say this about these uh, South Pole cows. They, they give their babies just what they need. Not too much, not too little, just about what they need. And uh, they do well. Grass and milk. You know, we've, we've had a, a few bottle calves in the past and don't do that much anymore, but uh, occasionally you'll get one, something happens to the mother or whatever. And, uh, but you can never duplicate what a mother cow does. I don't care if you give that calf seven bottles a day, you know, even half bottles, whatever. Uh, you can never duplicate this. And that's because that cow is giving that calf the butter fat. Okay, uh, the milk replacer you buy at the store doesn't have that butter fat in it. Look at that. And see, the, the butter fat is the last little bit of milk that that calf gets. If she's sucking that cow out, it's right at the very end. And it's the butter fat that gives you a calf that looks like this. And this is a heifer. Five sixteen. You have built a beautiful calf, man. Oh man, oh man. I mean, that's just a beautiful calf. What's nuts is that calf. Mama's got a few flies on her back, but that calf doesn't have any. Just as slick as a button. She's she's getting. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Oh, 64. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted your breakfast. <laughs> yep, she's getting the butter fat right now, the last little bit. They said a good cow in her whole lactation will give about 250 pounds of butter fat before that calf you know, actually stops sucking at you know, seven, eight months, whatever. That calf is unbelievable. That's a beaut. Already looks like a little female cow. But uh, yeah, so the, the cows are, are grazing here pretty good. I'm gonna end this up and we're going to make another move here in a little bit. But uh, those of you all, uh, we're going to come back here and make another video of this tonight after they've been on here a while. And uh, we'll see what this looks like. And uh, you, you all knew the channel, hit that subscribe button on the way out. And uh, that like, I'd appreciate it. And we'll see you all down the road.